Hi, my name is Ryan Wan, and I'll be presenting a reflection on my work as an OS student. I'm currently a second year in majoring in biology, and I work as an undergraduate research assistant in Dr. Philip Karpovich's lab, where we study circadian rhythm and its role in animal health. I found this lab while researching biomedical labs on campus for my first year OS application, and I found the concept of such an ancient biological pathway like circadian rhythm just really fascinating, especially with its relation to health. So I decided to apply my first year in the winter semester, and I've been working since uh, for about over a year now. What exactly is our project about? Well, the circadian clock is a molecular mechanism that drives the 24-hour circadian rhythm, uh, which is a term you might have heard of before. Although circadian rhythm is run within cells, external cues such as light from the sun or from your phone or food can affect it. The clock regulates behavior and bodily processes, including your sleep-wake cycles, digestive processes, and much more. Surprisingly, disruptions in circadian rhythm have been correlated to poor gut health and diseases like inflammatory bowel disease and Crohn's disease, which both have an effect uh, on your intestines and your colon. Modern norms such as constant blue light exposure from electronics, jet lag from international travels, and shift work in hospitals all alter our sleep schedules, and as such, disruption in circadian rhythms have become much more common in today's society. Because of this, it is vital for us to study the relationship between circadian rhythm and intestinal health, and our research may help formulate new treatment and prevention methods for these intestinal diseases I've mentioned before. In Dr. Karpovich's lab, I aid in mouse research, looking at the role of circadian rhythm and how it affects our intestinal health and regeneration. I've measured disease activity of the mice. I've stained and analyzed tissue samples from said mice as well. Specifically, I look for and compare disease markers like inflammation in both our control mice that have circadian rhythm and our muted mice that lack circadian rhythm. An example of a sample I would look at is something on the on the right here, these images on the right, which I pulled from one of our previous papers that came out of our lab. These are colon samples stained with something called hematoxin and eosin, which is also called h &E. This is a stain that allows us to analyze the structure of the tissue and more accurately compare them uh, when looking under a microscope or when looking through our scanning software. So as an undergrad, I work under a PhD student who leads all the experiments and assigns me work, but in research labs across campus and maybe even within a research lab, working under graduate students and postdocs, or even the PI themselves is common as well. In my time in lab, I've learned many different skills that have helped me with my research. Firstly, I learned how to care and measure my specimen uh, by weighing them, knowing how to handle mice. And I had to go through a little bit of training to do that with Animal Colony, uh, both, uh, well, when I did it, it was online. It's probably in person now, uh, but those are some things you'd have to do if you do work with animals in any lab. I've learned how to stain and analyze sample tissues uh, using our AxioScan software in our lab. Uh, and this software helps us do things like count cells, look at tissue structure, and accurately compare different types of different samples from each other. I learned how, uh, how to do different biomolecular laboratory techniques, such as gel electrophoresis. Uh, specifically, this technique helps us determine whether or not a mice is a mutant or a normal mice by looking at their genome. Lastly, I've learned how to use the PRISM software, which is a graph, uh, graphing software we use in our lab. Um, and this software helps us collect, use the data we collected and make do statistical calculations on it, which can tell us whether or not our data is significant or not. It also makes us pretty, pretty nice graphs. <laughs> Other projects in our lab that we work on have to do with Drosophila as well as fish. So mice aren't the only things that you will be look, uh, you will be working on. You could be working on at least. Uh, and we also work with organoids, which are lab-grown cell clusters. In our lab, we grow and experiment with mouse colon organoids specifically. So if you join our lab, you may be put with the mice like me, or you may be put on one of our other projects. Being in this lab has given me so many opportunities to connect with others and expand my knowledge. After meeting Dr. Director Karpovich and our lab manager, Maram, in my interview, I met many other undergrads, a lot of other graduate students, as well as PhD students, and our postdoc, and they all have created a very uh, positive environment for me to you know, uh, learn about research and grow as a researcher. We're a pretty small lab compared to other labs, so don't be scared if you apply to another lab and there's like 50 or more people in it. I've gone through a lot of different training in order to start experiments as well. 
and things like Aurea and health safety are things you would have to do for the OS program. But I've had to do other additional training such as WIMIS 2015, rodent care and biosafety lab level two specifically. So if you join our lab, you might have to do, go through different trainings depending on what part of our lab you work in. Uh, since I work with the rats, I, would, I did have to do things like rodent care and the biosafety lab training. Uh, I've built a lot and further developed a lot of transferable skills, uh, specifically time management, which I've learned how to do a lot uh, in my second year. Critical thinking, which is very important for making uh, inferences in research. Uh, communication, which is really, really, I feel like it's very important in research because you'll have to, you'll have to talk about your research to your PI or to whoever you report to, as well as other people uh, that you might meet. And so being able to communicate your ideas and your research and your conclusions in a concise and clear manner is very, very important. Uh, so as well as perseverance, because Sometimes you're not going to get the best results, but you just have to keep pushing through Do maybe get some, collect some more samples, recount a sample or something, but getting that, uh, getting that significant result at the end of the day is like a really, really satisfying feeling. And it's something I really hope you guys will be able to experience sometime in the future. I've learned a lot of different topics that pertain to our research, such as pathologies of things like IBD and Crohn's, the circadian clock colon histology, tissue stains, uh, different types of markers of intestinal disease and intestinal health, as well as many, many biomolecular concepts. And although I haven't been to many places outside of campus yet, uh, I've hoped to attend many one day many of the conferences that are run by our affiliated organizations, such as the Canadian Association of Gastroenterology or the Canadian Society of Chronobiology. I've gone through many struggles, both mentally and experimentally, in my time with research. And using Kolb's learning experiment, uh, experimental learning cycle, I'll discuss my first journal club. Every few months, our lab has a journal club where one of the graduate students picks out a research paper for everyone to read for the week and discuss at our lab meeting. And although I'd read research papers before, the one assigned seemed like a completely different beast. There were terminologies, like different molecular, biomolecular terminologies, types of graphs and concepts among many, many things I didn't understand. And when I tried to Google them, I was stuck with even more confusing research papers, something you a feeling you might be familiar with. I made way to lab still totally unprepared for what was to come. My face felt hot and red, maybe from the 25 degree summer weather, or maybe from the fear of looking completely clueless in front of my peers, most of whom I've only met once or twice. As I approached the crowd of students, I could either chatter about the paper and all their thoughts about it, and they all seemed like they knew what they were talking about while I had no clue, which makes me even more anxious. I, and like I predicted, I blanked when it came to my turn to comment on the paper, and I got really, really embarrassed, and I thought, oh, everyone thinks of me as the first year who can't even understand a simple research paper assigned to us. But looking back, I can see I was overreacting a little bit in the moment, let my feelings go to my head. And others probably thought of me as the first year who just started, but has a lot of time to grow and read as a uh, learn how to read these research papers. And I know that because I've gotten a lot of advice from the upper years since then. And something another undergrad said to me that really stuck was, it's okay if you get lost or confused with all these papers, because most of the time we're lost right there with you. And I realized I'm not alone in my struggles and that I shouldn't feel so helpless in my lack of knowledge, especially if I'm starting as a first year who really does not know a lot about biology in general yet. By looking at a bigger perspective, I can understand the situation better and see how much I got to my head and how much others really actually thought of me compared to what I thought. In the moment, I had a poor learning disposition, thinking that I can never be like these upper years who understand these complex papers and have complex discussion about it. I lacked faith in my ability to learn, thinking things like violent plots and heat maps or things I would never understand because I didn't immediately understand them. And I'm going to be honest, I still don't really completely understand them right now, but I'm getting there. In future journal clubs, I gave myself more room to breathe instead of thinking I need to understand every, every single little bit of the paper. I recognize that I'm really just starting my journey in research, and it takes time to understand all the bits and pieces of molecular biology, which is a very, very complex topic, types of graphs, and more. I've also stopped letting myself think that others are always judging me when I'm new in an experience and try to focus how instead I can improve myself. So it's okay to have all these feelings. It was okay for me to have to feel like overwhelmed and embarrassed and think like that. But at the end of the day, if you look back and realize, you might think, you, you might see that you've been, you're getting a little bit in your head there and not everyone's out to get you. So 
Thank you for listening. Um, that's the end of my research reflection. Quick shout out to Dr. Tim Brunette for uh, putting this all together. Uh, also shout out to my lab, specifically Dr. Philip Karpovich and uh, Zainab Taleb, who's my primary, who I report to primarily. Uh, and thank you to uh, the Lancet leadership team as well as OS, just for giving me this opportunity in general uh, to share my experiences and even be in a research lab. I'm really excited to see where my future in Dr. Karpovich's lab takes me. And um, hopefully I'll see you guys there if you're interested. <laughs> thank you so much for listening.